Okay. I think we might be live. <clears throat> Let me know when you guys can hear me. And if you can see me. Whoops, you can't see me. <laughs> there, now you can see me. Blah! You guys get to see my professional lighting. Um, hello, Made by Pam and PJB Stamper, Pam. Hi, Carrie Porter. Hey, Linda. Guess what? I never got my nap. Can you believe it? I bet you can. It was horrific. But, <clears throat> yeah. Anywho, that's the way it goes. <laughs> Don't forget to put your chat on live chat, folks. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And hit the bell for notifications. And when you do hit the bell, make sure you go all the way to the top to the solid bell that says all. <clears throat> uh, yes, I did get your Yahtzee turn finished. <laughs> All right, well, guess what? Tonight, I felt <laughs> like playing with wool. So, I've decided that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I got this little um, kit. It was a cute little kit. It came from the... Um, you can actually get kits like this on Amazon or any of your local, maybe yarn shops, fiber shops. It's a needle felting kit, and um, this one I got at, thanks Pam, <laughs> this one I got at the um, Bridgeton Mall across the street for 50 cents, and I thought it came in a little tiny basket. I've kind of rummaged through the basket because I've gotten stuff a little started, but came with a little basket with all of the supplies. You got like the roving for the actual body the fur, the nose, the head, I mean, not the head, the head, nose, and the ears, the Bridgeton Mall. Yes, my Bridgeton Mall. So anyway, I thought, you know what? I want to play with it. And I did a lot of, um, of the hard things. And look, I was thinking about the Easter eggs the other day that Linda did. I could do them too. And I could just felt the color on because I have so much color. So... <clears throat> I, I don't know a lot about felting like I put in the description. I'm mostly self-taught. A lot of this stuff too, my um, kids did growing up and I'm just trying to use up all the leftovers and then things I pick up along the way. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jonna. Um, anyone else? Everyone. If I miss you, hopefully um, my moderators catch you. I apologize. I tend to miss the chat at times. Hi, Donna. Sherry D. Hello. Hi, Elizabeth. Big hugs for Elizabeth. Hugs for all. Big hugs for Elizabeth. All right. So, yeah. So, um, I don't really know. And today I needed a, um, I wanted a nice felt. I've been wanting a felt pad for a while. I have a felt a felting um, cushion and I believe when I did some felting with Elizabeth on her channel last year I used this which you can use you know it works you can poke into it and this is just the the um, the container from the Tim Holtz um, stamping platform and I saved it it had the foamy stuff in it that protected the um, the platform and the and the flex the plexiglass and I just I saved it and I use it for doing my flat felting but um so anyway when you get of course you have a sheep then you shear it and it's all different sh types of sheep produce different types of wool and uh <laughs> right Jim <laughs> and um so you get you get sheep that you can just cut the wool off and this is what you get like a bunch of this this curly kiwi stuff and you can leave it this way and use it which is what we're going to do to actually put it back on a sheep tonight because i think it looks good there anywho and then 
this could be the same thing as this, but what happens is they, they have those, have you know those flat pet combs? It's a comb kind of like that, and you can, and they have big ones too, but this is a like combed and carded um, wool. It's just really been um, combed and combed and combed, and you, you, um, you get it nice and smooth. And this is what you can use to, um, to, as a base, um, and some of it is more raw. They have some that come in different cuts. Like your first cut might not be as good off a sheep. Then your second cut might be better. It's the same with rabbits. But anyway, the lesser of the um, better fiber is the ones that they use for core, core, the core wool, which is the stuff that you use for the centers of creating your fel felt um, creations. And as you can see, even when you get it from someplace, professional you still get little bits of hay and I left this to show you this is like sand and dirt that falls out of stuff and it, it does come that that happens I I get pieces of this that um have pieces of grass in it <laughs> like oh here's this and this was one that came in the kit and it's got some hay pieces because sometimes especially if it's not carded like this you will get that and this too oh it feels so nice. I'm sure it's been washed a, a couple of times, but maybe once or twice. I don't know. But um, I can still feel all the lanolin in it. Like it's nice and um, moist, like oily, like conditioned. Oh, it feels good. It feels good. I like it. If they had, <laughs> well, I can't imagine bathing the sheep. But did you see I just picked that up and see all that comes out again? And this is wool right out of this. These are right out of these baskets. They, they believe it or not, squished all this into little tiny bags. <laughs> I popped it out because I wanted to. I wanted to see if I could get it to puff a little bit before um, using it to cover my sheep. But hey, Melissa, welcome home. Welcome home. How's it feel? <laughs> And Melinda, did I see Melinda? Hi, Melinda. Oh, thank you for hitting the thumbs up on your way in. So anyway, um, yeah, so there's different types of, of things. And, and you can get this kind of wool. And if you want different colors, this is the same stuff. It hasn't been combed, but it has been dyed. So this is this, just in a green, a green dye. And then you can get the carded stuff the same way like this white stuff that I showed you that's just um, smooth and carded. Same thing. They they dye it and uh, smooth it out. So there's all different things. And if you want to know more, you can ask me. I can try to look up the answer because, you know, sometimes I do that. I'm, I may not know the answer. But anyway, so I started... <clears throat> creating the core to our little sheep that we're going to make tonight. And basically this is what their bodies look like. You just kind of um, form it into, um, I did it here and I can show you with this how it got started. And this, this isn't for um, felting, but you can use, you can use it for whatever you would like. <laughs> this is for weaving, but they make a tool that you can use to wrap the wool around to get a nice even um, a nice even twist. And so this would be what I would start felting. And then I would start squaring it, uh, it off on one end so that I get a bigger end. And then I would go around and start um, forming it to, to felt and, and close in this one end so that we start with this which is what we, we kind of want this egg shape so that we have the butt of the sheep and this will be the head. So yeah. Oh, and I thought I threw that out. A little piece of hay or it's another piece, but yeah. But yeah, Jim, you mentioned washing it. I, I can't imagine. Um... Oh, she's smiling at the green here, Elizabeth. I'll put some more green down here for you. Um, I can't imagine washing a sheet because of, for one, the, 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 the oil in it, the lanolin in it. And, uh, 
Oh, really? You got some felt eggs? Well, I, I was thinking I should make some and then I could just um, um, <clears throat> put felt flowers and felt colors and just do some like that, you know, that'd be cool. Oh, Melissa, I bet your, I bet your mail was overwhelming. Sheesh. You have problems with cotton wool? Dawn, if she feels cold, but craft room is still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet. Well, I'm sure you'll get in there and warm it up soon. Okay, Elizabeth. No, no worries. There'll be a replay. Oh, it had a cardboard core. Okay, well, I, I did see some felted eggs when I was looking around for designs because I thought about doing eggs. And um, they wrapped them around plastic eggs. You can actually take this and save a lot of wool by just wrapping a small layer. And then you would just felt it around the... Um, actually, they may have wet felted. I didn't see, but I did see the, them wrapping the fiber around the um, plastic egg. <clears throat> But anywho, I have I showed you my pad, the foam pad. I've been wanting a felting pad, so I sewed this up real quick this morning. Um, I saw a girl did one, and she did a darker side and a lighter side. The darker side for using your darker colored wool and, um, you know, felting on these things. And then your lighter side for um, the, the white, the light colored wools. Hey, Melissa. Hi. <laughs> I have zero desire to felt. I guess you could now say I'd watch Dawn do anything, even felt wool. <laughs> Listen, Melissa, you, you do not have to torture yourself. So what I'm doing now, this is what felts it. And I'm sure that most of you know, but if there are some people here that don't know or replayers that watch, um, this little needle has barbs on it. It's very hard to see the barbs, but boy, you can feel them. So you want to be careful not to um, stick yourself. <laughs> okay, Mindy, I'll make beads with you. You, you, and um, you and Missy can message me on uh, Messenger. And when you stick it in, it's going to it's going to grab um, other parts of the wool and attach itself. As you can see, if I just keep going in one spot. See how it digs it? It it dents, dents itself. I'll get rid of that and you won't see it. But <laughs> um, So that's what you do. You just keep kind of going around. And if it's a super big project, and this is filled with wool, by the way. You can fill these with wool or you can fill them with rice. Some people fill them with um, buckwheat. Hi, Judy. How are you? Um with a uh, buckwheat and you know this one like i said is just this um it's raw raw wool so yeah and um if you're new to um needle felting really you should get finger protectors i probably should too i have poked myself before hopefully there's no no blood during this show pam <laughs> let's hope for the best i mean i've already burnt myself this year that was my first big boob. What else was it? I think I cut my thumb last year. I don't think that was this year. So I'm just going to keep doing this until it gets down to the size and felts up to a tight enough egg where I can start adding um, some wool for his fur coat. <laughs> I, Judy, you know, we could spend all night... Um, Yes, Linda. And we will. We'll do it again. I know, Pam. I know the rules. Judy, you could spend all night saying hello to everyone. I saw someone once say, here's a big blanket hello to everyone. And I found that really works so much easier for me because I end up spending most of my time saying hi to everyone. <laughs> Oh, and you can do this. They also have the punches. <clears throat> this is a pen, but they have a punch that you can um, get that will have multiple. It has like maybe um, nine needles that um, hook inside these these pens. This one has two. 
Um, it can hold three, but I have two in there right now. So if you're doing bigger projects and you want to get something that really, really to go in, this is like double speed with the two needles because I'm poking twice and I with one poke. <laughs> so yeah, so it kind of makes it convenient. But you can kind of see already it's it's compacting itself up nicely. And if you're new to needle felting also, um, these needles are very fragile. And okay, Carrie, I, you know what? I so appreciate you stopping in. I know it's so late there and I'm so gracious and grateful. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Michael's has a wool kit. We saw some wool stuff the other day. Oh yeah, that's cool. And you, you know, there's a lot of fiber shops. And if you, if you guys, hey, if you have a a, a sheep farm in your area, um, sometimes they'll give you the off cuts, and you can you can make you can work with it. As you saw this stuff I put down, it still had look. It has lots of um, yuck yuck, you know, but it's not a big deal. But anyway, when you're using these needles, did I already say it? Make sure you go straight in and out, in and out. Because if you try to turn, these can snap and they will snap. They are very, very fragile, especially once your your wool starts getting nice and firm, you know, where it's resisting a little bit. It's not as flexible. So... Melissa and Melinda, what are you guys talking about? I can't get my, can't wait to get my stuff from you, Missy. Is it felting stuff, Melinda? <laughs> so we're going to work with this one because this one's down to the size that I want it. And it's nicely shaped because this, this takes a while. If we have enough time at the end, we'll work on that one a little bit again. But we are, so... Um, I'm looking. I think I want to go with this. I like this brown. I like this brown for the sheep. <clears throat> Dinner is ready. Going on mute, but why? Okay, Linda. Oh, I'm so excited you get to see her Thursday. That's awesome. Oh, Melissa Klepser, you've never seen this done before, huh? It's pretty fun. Now I'm just using, I'm not looking at a big um, amount of things here. So I'm just going to use my single needle and I'm not going in that far. I just want to tuck the fibers just around the surface. I just want to kind of, I'm going to move them around and um, just tuck them in. And I want to try to leave um, as much of the little locks intact as I can so that he looks more like an uh, unshaven sheep. <laughs> giving him his locks back. Locking them back on him. <gasps> A green stripe. <laughs> uh, well, I saw all kinds of really cool stuff that you could... Um, I was thinking I could do some shamrocks too. It would be fun. So, yep, I'm just going to put this on enough to poke it in there, enough to give him a coat. Oh, green hooves. <laughs> Those are good ideas, Jim. And it's, it's super easy. Um, there's really no talent that's required to, to um, felt, really. I mean, you're just poking. You're poking, poking felt. <laughs> okay, Melinda, take care. No funny moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, um, the wool, uh, this one that I'm using was an actual kit that came. 
that I picked up um, at the transfer station across the street. And you can actually get them. I've seen them at Michael's. I've seen them at Joann's. Um, where else do you guys, what else do you guys have that's around? There's, I thought there was this, another something, something for craft. Uh, Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. That's it. But um, if you have fiber stores around, you can um, you can um, look look there. And sometimes they have the wool, and it's just wool roving. Sometimes you can find yarn shops that do handmade or hand spun yarns. Because I've done that with this too. Now I took some of this and I hand wove it into um, a chunky yarn, and this was actually spun on this on this dowel. And this is called, this one's homemade. This is called a drop spindle. And um, my daughter and I made a spinning wheel from PVC pipe and a bike tire, which was really cool. And she used it. It worked. But um, this is actual drop spindle, which is really cool. And it just, you're basically um, spinning right on here. And then you can pull it off. And you'll have a small, small, you know, a little ball. But this is one we did with um, black wool. And this is the roving that has been uncarded. If you notice, it's a little more, it's not like this. This has really been combed out. You can really see the difference in the, in the fibers. This one is still kind of puffy. So <clears throat> plus a different kind of sheep, <laughs> different kind of wool. But yeah. So, so yeah, so... I spun and she spun and then um, we took the two and spun them together and we made a um, a chunky um, yarn with the black and white and took the two two skeins and spun them so and it's kind of fun because it's it's very organic you know there's nothing you can make it nice and you know even those that have done it for a while get beautiful yarns, as you guys probably seen, like the Hanks that you can buy at fiber stores, yarn shops. So. <laughs> oh, Missy, you're so funny. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Girl. Yes. Well, I only had one. And, you know, I had this drop spindle forever in my yarn box. I knew it had to do with fiber because I saw the the little hook thing on the end. And I'm like, it's got to have something to do with yarn. But I just didn't research it. It just wasn't, I wasn't ready. And then when my daughter was looking into spinning and doing a lot of felting and fiber art, um, I was looking things up and I saw this. I was like, oh, my God. I know what it is. It's a drop spindle. <laughs> but unfortunately, we only had one. So I had um, another one. I just made another one handmade. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yes. I love um, I love going to the, um, the fiber tent, the fiber building at the fair. We have a lady that lives local here that goes to the fair and, and she will spin right off of her rabbits, which is really cool. And my daughter actually raised, my youngest raised rabbits for a little while with the intention of doing a lot more spinning. And I, so I have some Angora that um, she sheared from her bunny. And I actually saw um, a really neat um, felted rabbit where they used the bunny fur and put it back onto the rabbit and made a, another felted angora rabbit, which was really cool. Huh. But yeah, this stuff is just heavenly. Just, uh, so soft. But you can spin this. It's, it's a little more difficult. And sometimes people will put it with another fiber <clears throat> to give it a little strength. But yeah. But I was thinking, and it is feltable, so I was thinking um, I might use it to felt. <laughs> it would be fun. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool, Jonna. Yeah, I, I've been wanting a spinning wheel forever. But until I know that I can really commit, because I'm just like ADD with crafting, 
as you guys can tell i'm just all over the place like i felt like this week i'm like oh i feel like fiber arts i've been doing all this other mixed media type stuff and so <clears throat> yeah <laughs> i until i know i'm in a place where i would really utilize it well I, i'm not ready to spend that kind of money not that i have that kind of money at this time but my gosh this wool is so i love it and it was a little more stretched out than i wanted but that's okay we can make it work it'll look cute oh wouldn't that be cool jim that would be cool i already was saying that i <laughs> you know that could fit into the idea that i had um, have you ever seen the movie The Holiday where the two ladies um, swap places? There's a girl, I think, from, I don't know, was she in Paris or somewhere or in Italy? And she swapped places with a lady here in the States. Yes, I believe it was Kate Winslet. Yeah. Well, I was thinking that wouldn't that be cool to have that with a crafters like all the crafty people that know each other, you know, we could like, hey, do you want to come stay here for a week, you know, or a few days or and then we we you swap places, but you can also use their craft craft stuff like I would leave you guys all my felt to use. I think it would be so fun. <laughs> So hopefully I have enough of this gray stuff to go around. I might have to kind of stretch and fiddle. And I can't believe they fit this all in that little tiny bag. And I think that they measure it out by weight, which is what's going to get me here, because a lot of this is so thick. It's beautiful, though. I hate to pull it apart. But yeah, I was so happy with my my little felt pad this morning. It's like, oh yes, it's a lot quieter, isn't it, Elizabeth? Remember the last time I was felting? I don't I don't know how much you guys can hear. Yes, they do, Melissa. I saw that. I was actually telling Linda because she was like, oh, I just need a needle, and I was like, listen, I saw needles on um, Temu. They had felting needles for very inexpensive. So, yep. And this is the thing, too, is like if you need to stretch, you can kind of gently pull your wool and go and tack it. You can move it around. You know, it's easy to move around. I'm trying to stretch it out so I can make sure I cover all the all the bits and bobs here, all the parts. I might have to pull some of it apart to cover. But yeah. <laughs> oh, Melissa Sue, I'm so glad you're here. I want you to know though, you don't you're not obligated to sit and watch me felt, although <laughs> if you don't like felting. I mean, it could be mesmerizing though, right? I get mesmerized. I've like, Linda, you probably shouldn't do this the way you sleep craft. You probably fall asleep and poke yourself. <laughs> You'd want to be, <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah. Hey, I would have no problem being here too if someone just wanted to come visit. Or I could just go visit somewhere and just leave Willie home. You guys could entertain him. <laughs> He's usually good about not bothering the craft room. So if you do want to stay in the craft area. <sighs> and there's a there's a there's lodging in the craft area, so <laughs> if I got a small um refrigerator, you, you would only have to leave to go out to buy pre made food for the refrigerator. <laughs> 
Oh, you've never seen this either? Oh, well, I'm glad you guys are... I'm glad you guys are hanging out and checking it out. Like I said, this, this guy is a little organic, and I've never done a sheep like this. And I feel like it looks so much better in the picture, but I don't know. Maybe he'll look better as I get going. What you saw before the little egg, that was a that was a naked sheep. He like he was shorn already, so we're we're putting his uh, we're putting his coat back on him. But see, I love these, and I don't want to I don't want to felt it because I just love these little um, these little spots. I want them to kind of hang, you know, show. And I wish all of it was like that, but I got a lot of straight pieces too, not a lot of. And they didn't give me enough of that color. So, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Oh, yeah. That is kind of crazy, Elizabeth. I was wondering that, too. Unless, um, I was wondering if she might have jumped from somewhere. He said she was running around. All right, let's go with that. If we need to fix it as we go, we will. So there's our there's our uh, our sheep torso. <clears throat> and now, so in the kit, it also they included the little dowels to use to wrap your um, pieces and it tells you it's really good in the kit it will tell you to grab like a um, a three inch piece because this is what they included for um, is this for the legs oh this is for the this is for the white sheep I want the black so this is what they included I find the end there we go and they'll tell you <clears throat> Hopefully I'll have enough. So they'll tell you that um, you need like a three inch piece for the ears. And what I'm going to do to pull it, if you come right close, you're not going to be able to pull it. So you want to kind of pull uh, a, a, away a little, hold a little bit away from where you want to separate it and then pull gently and it, and it separates the, um, the pieces out. And I forget there's a name for it. <laughs> I can't remember. My mind is blank. So I am just going to, and as I, that's what I was going to show you too. So when you're doing bigger pieces, you can use um, bigger dowels. And, and this only needs to be like an inch wide. I'm going to make the ears right now. And they're going to attach on the top of the head. And I'm going to leave it on here and I'm going to gently just connect these fibers while staying away from the stick. And I should probably push that over. Can you guys still see if I put it on the green? I hope so. All right, so um, so they you can use different dowels. I have like the stick for a different shape. If I want to do a different shape, I have this wide craft stick. This is from an old um, plaid. Um, if they call them those spouncers, the little um, sponge things. Well, the sponge I used and it got hard and I pulled it off and but you can um I can wrap on this I can wrap if I need to um you can use these you get the packs of the foam sponges at the Dollar Tree and you just hold the end of that and give it a little twist and they come right off and you can use the dowels or you can buy dowels I think I've seen at our Dollar Tree that they have actual dowels um well, depending on how young Elizabeth, she could have, yeah, had, like Jim said, his had something undetected, you know, some kind of a medical something, something hard saying, not knowing. 
Um, yeah, there's that. I think that's it. I just have these kind of things. I have regular, this is from the Dollar Tree, little skinny dowels. But then you saw me earlier for the body, I wanted something a little wider. So I just, um, but flat. And um, they actually make a tool for it. I just am, you know me, frugal. Frugal Franny. Frugal Fran. So right now, <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of flatten this. I'm going to kind of um, push these fibers together so it flattens them out. I'm going to roll it off the background. Spin it around because I want these to kind of, I want this to kind of come out like this because this is going to be, these are going to be my ears. My ears are going to kind of sit. Which way is my egg here? My ears are going to kind of sit here. And then I'll, I'll put the head, um, the head and the nose off the, off the front. It's a very primitive sheep. I'll have you know. So I'm just going to keep poking, flatten it out. And what happens when you're felting too, is that you're going to notice it's going to stick. And the other foams that I have that I've used in the past, I shall show you that came with some other kits that my daughter got. They're just like the big one, only smaller. And here's one that she just used to death. And you can see all the, you know, it still works. You, I could still use it, but it's um, the, the, um, the fibers get caught in those little pockets as you're pushing them through. So that's what I like about this, though, is it, it still goes through, comes off. You lose some, but not a lot. And it's not too bad, like I said, as far as noise. Thank goodness. Frugal Fran has a wrapper feel to it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, Jim, you crack me up. <laughs> but yeah, I found it very, um, like I wanted to take a nap. I was so tired earlier and I just got so caught up in forming my, um, the bodies to my sheep that I was like, you just get hypnotized by it. Yeah, Melissa Klepser. I was thinking of um, checking Timu if I do an order again and putting it in for a bunch of needles because then I have spares for these. And I'd like to get um, I'd like to get the punch. They have a, a, a green one. Um, Clover puts it out that um, holds like nine needles, if not more. It's It's got quite a lot, but it's good for big things like this. It would have come in handy. Yeah, so sad. Poor Elizabeth and her family. So you guys can kind of see the little ears forming. Hey, Deborah. How are you? <laughs> How's things? There, yeah, I feel like that's good. I just need to find the... Yeah, that's the front. It's hard once he starts getting his, uh, his uh, body back on. Do I want to come down that far? I might just tack it real lightly until I get the head on. Head done. <clears throat> Counting sheep didn't work today, Don. No, it didn't. Neither did felting it. <laughs> All right. And I think for the head, I think it said to go a little bigger. It said four inches, I think, if I'm going by memory here. So I'm going to take four. And I don't know how they, I think they quartered for the legs. They must have quartered. So when they quarter, you take um, a, a shank of the, the roving and you split it 
and then I'm going to split it in half. And these are going to be the amounts in fairly even, fairly even amounts for the legs. For the legs. And this one's a little more. This is going to be a fairly good size for the head. <laughs> How's everyone doing? How was everyone's weekend? Did uh, most of you guys attend the um, Watch the Card Makers Success Summit? I know the internet seemed to quiet for a lot of people that I, so I heard. So <clears throat> if you guys can see me wrapping, I'm kind of trying to shape while I'm on the the dowel um for his head i want them i want it to be kind of bigger on the top and then i want it to come down to a smaller point where its snout comes down not a lot but enough you know so i'm gonna try to um wrap more on one side than the other when i'm forming the head And I'll slide it off. And I'm going to leave this kind of, I'm going to kind of work the middle because I, I want to leave the top. <clears throat> I want to leave that um, a little open because I want to be able to blend that in when I do the ears. I want to be able to take the head and bring it down. And then I'm going to have, see, I'm going to have the head, the head to my sheep. This is going to hook right on. And it will be the head to my sheep. So I gotta felt that in a little. Oh, let me get back on camera. Oops. That was one or two, uh, one or two summits ago. Nope, not me. I still haven't watched the ones I paid for. Oh, 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 yeah. To the movies 80 for Brady. Oh, really? I haven't heard of that. We watched um, a pretty mind blowing movie. It was actually called Mind Cage. I don't know if anybody has seen that. I like a lot of stuff that I really have to like think and um, I, I don't want to figure it out. Like, I like movies. If I can figure it out, then I'm like, eh, I'm not impressed. You know, I want a movie that's made that I can't figure out. Sorry, I felt it a piece of my hair in here, and I'm trying to get it out. I don't want my hair in with the sheep's hair. Oh, yes, Linda. Crop and Create will be fun. All right, so I am going to very carefully, I'm going to try to round his little nose off. <clears throat> and this is why it's important if you're just starting out. Melissa, if you think you want to get into this, <laughs> um, you need really invest in the little fingertip um, protectors. Because um, I guess I didn't get the whole piece of hair out. There we go. Um because it's hard. I, I've been felting for a while, so I feel pretty comfortable, but that doesn't mean anything. I've been cooking for a while, too, and I burnt my fingers, so I don't know. I, I'm just a risk taker, I guess. <laughs> I'm an accident waiting to happen. Oh, gee, oh, she did. Wonderful. That's awesome. You'll get yours, Linda. All right, I'm going to check this out now and see if I got the sizing about right. Let me know. I tried to get in close, but not so close. I didn't want you guys to be, I didn't want you to kind of not see what was um, happening here. So I'm going to kind of hook it so that these ears are going to come out. And then we're going to kind of hook this down the front of the sheep. So this is going to be his head and his ears. 
And I think I'm going to hook the ears in a little bit more. That's going to be along the, just along the center. Get those in. Oh, is that what it is? The 80 for Brady? It's uh, Grace and Frankie, which is, um, what's her name? Lily Tomlin. And what's the exercise lady? Uh, oh, come on. You guys know her. She was in on Golden Pond, and so was her um, dad, Peter. I can't believe I can't think of her name. Yes, Jane Fonda. Thank you, Jonna. Thank you. And I hope I'm saying that right. I always wonder if it's, um, do I pronounce the J or is it a Y? Oh, Sally Fields. Okay. Yeah, I, I liked Grace and Frankie. That is correct with the J. Okay. So I am going to get his nose and I'm going to tack it. And I'm trying, I'm kind of trying to push it up while I push it under so that I have like a little bit of a distinction. So it's like his neck goes up underneath there, you know, and it's already, it's awful that I don't quite have all the wool, but this one will probably just, I don't know sit on my shelf until my granddaughter comes to visit. Maybe I'll give it to her. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to also do the same thing, kind of go in behind and kind of just push it down so that there's some connection all the way down. But I also want there to be a, I want there to be an indent between the ear and the head. I don't want, I, do, I want it to look like a separate, entity if that makes sense oh th <laughs> thank you elizabeth thank you you can do anything you guys get some kits i would love to maybe once i can afford to get some more stuff i really feel stuck this is this is using things i have most of it this kit i could have done the sheet but for 50 cents why wouldn't i get it i just ran into my console and my car was like heck yeah 50 cents i'll take it and <laughs> check it out this is how this is how good of a deal i get because this came from halcyon yarns it's the sheep needle felting kit. Can you guys see the, the price on it? I got it for 50 cents. $24. And it came in the little box with all the felt that you needed. Two needles, which I put in my pen to use. And the little dowels to do your wrapping and the instructions. So... I know, Linda. I love my mall. I try to go in smiling um, every time, every day that it's dump day. Like, hi, I'm here to clean up for you. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much what I do. Because I, I think, um, I think I showed you guys Sunday my little soul machine that I got. Oh my gosh. I had to find some of my curls here and hide some of the, oh my gosh, I do love the curls. I wish I had more of this. Maybe I can find some, pick some up. But anyway, so we got his head and his little ears attached. <laughs> I can probably felt those a little, that felt that in a little more. Give him a little definition along the snout where his eyes are. You know how they have that little little bump on their forehead? $2.99. Uh, 
too, Cal. Thanks. I know sometimes it's hard. I have so many things that I like to do. And I was going to do this a few couple weeks ago or a week ago when I got it. I guess it's been two weeks I've, since I've got it. But anyway, um, I was going to do it last week. And then I thought, no, why don't I? I'm always stuck about what to get, what to do on my live. So I think I will. Um, so can you guys kind of see from the side now? I kind of gave his little head some definition just by um, felting across uh, across this um, top area just below the ears. It kind of gave him a little forehead. And it kind of defined his little his little muzzle and his, his head. And then he's got his little ears. So they, I could leave him as is, and he would just be a, a laying down sheep, you know. He's laying on the hill in the grass. <gasps> Hi, Kathy Cowell. How are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I could, Elizabeth. I could. Problem is, is I don't want to get rid of any of it. When I find it, I'm just like, oh, I can use that. Oh, I can do that. Oh, I'll keep that. <laughs> so much fun. Um, there's my little. All right. We're going to make some little legs. And this is how I kind of gauge too, is I want, I'm kind of looking at it. I could probably put marks on the dowel to keep an eye on, um, you know, my, my width, but you guys can't see it, but I am at right about an inch. So that's good. I'm going to keep them about an inch. Then they stay, then they stay even, even Steven. And I just have to do a few tucks just to get it to attach to itself and I can slide it right off the thin end. <clears throat> and I'm just using my single needle because these are just, these are pretty small pieces. So I don't really need a whole, whole lot of punching going on. Jim, one of the goat farmers I follow, their favorite goat passed away. And then one of the farmers came down with the shingles. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's awful. I'm friends with the goat lady. I used to buy a lot of her um, lotions and um, goat soap and, uh, yeah, goat cheese. Oh, love the goat cheese. So these, I'm not going to, I did this end a little more blunt because I'm going to make this, you know, off of, um, I want this to be, I'm hoping I can get them all even. I'm not going to tack this on super, so you can see where my, he's got a bare belly. The poor thing, going to freeze, a little bare belly. But I want to kind of, um. I want to kind of gauge where I want it to be even. So I'm just going to tack it for now. And that's what I like too. It's like gluing, but look, you just don't, ha you don't have to wait. <laughs> it's like instant. <laughs> it's great. Um, I keep, there we go. Yeah. Kathy, have you ever needle felted before? I'm sure people have seen it done. Well, maybe not everyone. I know Jana said she hadn't seen it done. So, so once again, I'm wrapping this. And you guys saw me quarter it up. So it's pretty much the same amount of felt. Because we want even. We want his legs to be even, you know. And I'm just going to tack it. Very gently avoiding my dowel because I don't want to break the tip of my needle. I got it so it's hooked now so I can pull it, pull it off. <clears throat> and once again, I have this skinny end. 
and this end is going to be the one he stands on. All right, we got one leg. I'm kind of gauging it by his ears to see kind of where they're going to go. I don't want him to look bow-legged, you know. I want it to come down where. <laughs> and I want to make sure. And I'll tack them on so they're nice and strong, too, once we get them all. But I want to make sure they're in spots where he's going to be able to stand up. Because the other one that I do, when I do finish this one, I'm going to do this little guy with the, um, the white curls and um, cover him which he'll be easy because if I miss some spots you won't even be able to tell because it's the same color and uh, this guy will be laying beside him so I'll have to think of some names for them so one day I'm hoping I'm hoping my grandkids will come home this summer it'd be so nice I think I'm going to steal a little bit off of this one. It just looks, I don't know. Now this one looks bigger. Ah, well, I guess it's about right. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Stop it, Dawn. What do you guys think? Does it look even? <laughs> it's one of those things you could just keep pulling back and forth and it's like, okay, nope, nope. Yeah, we don't want him rolling off the hill. That's right, Linda. We don't. And I don't know if you guys notice, like when I'm rolling on, if it goes out wider than an inch, I, I'm pulling it back in. I'm pulling it back in and doing the roll. So it stays, you know, stays nice and neat. And if you also notice, I did it in the others too is one end is a little wider than the other and I keep setting my darn needle down. There we go. <clears throat> so we're gonna tack the end gently without hitting the dowel so we can pull it off without it loosening up. I want it to keep that taut twist. Like the wobble table leg just saw a bit off it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And before you know it, you're dining on the floor, right? Well, the good thing about this too is if I get a little too much wool on one side, you can bring it down to size because you can just keep keep poking it. The more you poke it, the smaller it's going to get. So if you have some that happen to be bigger, you can just keep keep felting those and it will work them into a smaller a smaller size that's the joy of it it's just it's like sculpting but so much easier like it's just so easy and i love the results i love the fast results you know there's no waiting for glue to dry there's not a lot of fussing with sewing like the needle does all the work so let's see, how do we want this one? I guess we'll do this guy right here. I want to kind of line it up front to back too. I guess I don't need that. Let's do a quick tack just to see. Yep, that looks good. And see like this leg, this leg can come in a little. We'll make it a little bit smaller. So we started off the day with snow, then snain, then snow again. And sometime while I wasn't paying attention, that sky cleared and the sun is now shining. Wow, lucky you, Pam. It is pitch black here and it is snowing like crazy. Like crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. 
<laughs> oh, it's quiet in here tonight. The guys are so quiet. <laughs> I was trying to, whoops. Um... I was trying to figure out what I can um, do with the um, my ball of yarn that I have over there, the black and white. I'm wondering if I should continue to spin two of these together, which is called twisting. So I would twist them. Oh, really? Oh, we have gotten it. It's It's been a couple days that we've had snow. What's today? It's Tuesday. I want to say it started like um, Saturday we got a little. Sunday we got a little more. Yesterday we got some more. And today it's really coming down. Yeah. Crazy. I was just saying to Will tonight, I'm like, look, the benches were all cleared off because we had like those days with like 45, 50 degree weather. And I was so thrilled because it melted so much of the snow around the yard. I could actually see my little benches that are underneath my apple trees. And now they're all covered up again. Can't see them. Oh, I, you know what? I want an actual, I have played on a spinning wheel. I don't own one, but I was part of a craft co-op for several years. And um, there were girls that spun and I got to use the spinning wheels. And I, I was intimidated and thought, no way, I can't do it. But it was so easy too. But I have, um, I don't, I don't think you were here at the beginning, um, Kathy, when I showed the, the drop spindles. So my daughter and I used to hand spin on these. And what you do is you let them hang. They kind of hang down. And then um, you, you just take the um, this and you kind of roll it along your leg while it's hanging. And um, that's what spins this. And then while it's spinning, you, you twist your fibers. You kind of hold it and twist your fibers down. And then as you it gets long, you, you, you wrap it onto your... Um, to your um, thingamajig. <laughs> I think actually, no, I guess that one doesn't. I think it went on that end. But yeah, it's pretty cool. We did the um, the black, and then we did some with the white. Yeah, I do have the homemade wheel. I do. I do have that. And there's a picture of it somewhere. Um, I'm thinking it's on my Facebook page somewhere back way back in the way back in there. Um, of my daughter actually spinning yarn on it because it was actually functionable function functioning. Functionable. Uh, what's the word? Help me out, folks. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if you can, you can look Google it. Um, drop spindle, um, and they actually show people doing it on YouTube too. They have some really good tutorials on drop spindling and making your own drop spindles. If you can get your hands on roving, I know you can buy the roving at um, um, on Amazon too. They do sell it. I've seen it. And I think this is going to work once I get this felted a little more. Now I like where they are. I need to take a video break, getting a headache. Okay, Pam. Take care. Thanks for coming in, popping in. I appreciate you. Very, very much. 
I know it's not easy modding for this crazy channel. <laughs> right, Elizabeth? <laughs> Linda? Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. He is cute. And you can buy the felting kits if you're interested in felting. You can get those on Amazon. I think Linda said she saw them on Amazon. This one came from a fiber shop, Halcyon, Halcyon Yarns. That's up in northern Maine, I'm thinking. Someone took a field trip there, got their hands on one, and then never did it. Or they probably had a kid that was interested in it and then decided they weren't interested in it. <laughs> I know I have lots of things that my kids did like that. They did it and then they just moved on to other things. So. Oh, yes. Oh, hi, Lori. Yes, there is. I that's I always forget Etsy. You can look on Etsy. And that's even better because then you're you're supporting a small small business. And I forget that people actually, you know, have that on there as a handmade. Durr. Yep, I wasn't even thinking. Thank you for throwing that out there. And guess what, Lori? I never got my nap today. I tried. I tried and tried again. Tried some more. I got caught up on this darn um, felt forming. <clears throat> so now my, my legs are a little more solid in here. I'm trying to, I keep trying to get this, the back ones, kind of make sure they're not, they're in there firmly. And, <laughs> but they're a little smaller than my front ones. So I keep trying to tighten up these front ones a little bit to bring them down. Bring them down to size a little. I'll just keep flattening them a little bit. Yeah. So I was thinking about polymer clay tonight. And, um, but I think Linda and I are going to shoot for trying to do that next week on our Sunday fun day. I'm going to do some canes and she's going to do some little um, clay bit shapes. So that ought to be fun. Yes, it, it truly can. It truly can. I, I just was like, okay. And I, I knew I had to get some stuff ready for tonight. I'm making these eggs for the, the body forms. It takes a little while to get your, you know, the roving. Cause this, this is, this is one that started it's not even down to size that this one was um yeah it still has a little ways to go but it it took a while it took a while so yeah but i think he's gonna stand up i think he's gonna be okay i think we're giving him new life and we gave him back his his fur coat the poor thing He's now, he's now unshorn. He went from shorn to unshorn. Let's see. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I'm going to move my felt pad over. Yeah, and then I had to make my felt pad too, um, Lori. <laughs> I sewed the pad up to felt on. So, there we have it. And like I said, this isn't as, like it had some curls, but it's really not as loose as I would have liked I would have liked it if it was a little more curly like the white the white's got some really nice locks this is going to be fun to felt 
but he does have a couple of patches. But yeah, kind of stick his, some of it, attach it back to his belly a little. But there he is. Look, he's so cute. And he stands up. <laughs> yes, Sunday on Linda's channel, four o'clock. Sunday fun day. Yes, Elizabeth, you and I need to get together whenever you're ready. I almost reached out yesterday and then I heard, I read your your situation and um, I figured it wasn't a really good time to call you and ask you if you wanted to play with paper pulp. <laughs> so let me know. And um, they kind of do, they kind of do, but they're kind of, um, they're kind of hidden. They're like little tiny ones that are, you know, um, there's his tail end, okay? <laughs> it's there. It's there. <laughs> but um, let me know, Elizabeth, um, when you want to practice some pulp making. We'll try to fit it in. Oh, you did, Kathy? How lucky. How lucky. Yeah, this little guy, he's, he's a little cutie. I'm going to practice with some other stuff. This... Um, like I said, I wish I could have had some more curls that were around. Oh my gosh, did you ever play with the wool? Your Friday and Saturday are open? Okay. All right, so we'll we'll pick one of those days and um and go for it. I'm trying to think of what I have for Friday. N nothing that I know of. So maybe we can do it Friday afternoon. But, yeah. But see, I don't want to go in too far. I've just been kind of just easily because I, I don't want it to be a tight. I want it to have the the texture of the hair kind of loosey-goosey loosey on there. But, yeah. So that's that, folks. That's what you get. Thank you for coming oh hey Pam how are you doing are you uh they were really a pain <laughs> and you know what I always wanted to get sheep I always wanted to get goats actually and goat they they get they're so prone to sickness like and um like parasites and different things and there's so much worming and other stuff that has to go on that I'm just like uh I don't know I just I thought it would be more of a pain than not to um, to to get some. You know? Did you say you had some, Lori? Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate you stopping by and watching me, you know, st stick some wool for a while. It was fun. I, it, I really needed to just kind of play with a different kind of fiber. I've been doing lots of um, papery stuff and... You are really fun. <laughs> oh, you do? Well, I think it's fun. I love the curly stuff. So you could you could form um a little thing and do some do some little sheep then, Lori, with your curly stuff. Cause see this stuff, if you lay it all flat and you just start to go around the edge with and fold in this and leave this. You're going to have some cute little locks that are going to go around this little guy. And he'll look so cute, too. We had um, we had chickens and bunnies. We did. We, did, we had some meat rabbits. And then my daughter had some um, pet rabbits that she actually um, took to the fair and showed them. And then... She had the um, Angora that she thought she was going to spin. And that's a little of this guy here, which is, oh, it's so lovely. So lovely. Wouldn't he look good with a little Angora? Um, <laughs> I was thinking of doing a rabbit. I saw there's, um, I think it's Serafina Wool or Serafina Fibers. They have a YouTube channel and um, she does a lot of amazing felting and she has a bunny that she did and she used um, some long stuff for for it. 
Good night, Judy. Thank you so much. I hope to see you. I've been watching for you, my friend. I hope that you um, go live. Maybe I'll see you next Monday. But, um, oh, and pigs. We didn't have official pigs. We had a pot belly pig that my um, my oldest got. Yes, Sarah. See, yes, Lori. I agree. She's amazing. Um, my oldest wanted a um, pot belly pig. She actually wanted a puppy. And I was like, nope, no puppies. I said anything else but a puppy. And the, that was like the worst words ever that came out of my mouth. Because um, we have like this buy, sell, trade book. And she got in it and found um, this woman had had a litter of pot belly pigs. And we drove two and a half hours north of us um, and picked up a an eight week old pot belly pig and brought him home in a dog her home in a dog carrier and we had her for a little over ten years. Yeah, and that I I advise anyone who wants a pot belly pig don't get a pot belly pig because <laughs> it's like having a toddler forever. Your kids grow up, they move out of the house, they can't take a pig because no place will let them live there with a pig. <laughs> oh, yes, llama would be great. Um, same with the other ones. What's the other one? The little llamas. I can't, my words are horrible. Um, alpaca, alpaca. That's great, too. I've gotten um, not the not the fibers from it, but I've gotten hanks of the of the yarn, and um, and done hand warmers with the alpaca. I love that. I've gotten dirty wool, and I've just carded it myself with um, those combs that you get. Um, you can you know wash it and let it dry, and then you can kind of card it out. Um, if you don't have an actual carter, the, this I'm sure went on a carding machine because it's, you know, it's, it's nice, but I've seen people hand card with the little, um, um, it's like a pet comb, like cat combs, the little metal, um, with the little metal tines that come off. You can, you can use those and you can comb, um, your fire, your roving. So. Yeah, some of this stuff, um, I can still, oh, it's so nice. I can feel the, um, the, you can feel some of the lanolin in it. It's very silky. I mean, I can tell it's been washed, but it still has some pretties in there. It feels good. I love it. But... Well, thanks for joining me, you guys. I didn't know how big of a crowd would uh, fall in tonight with this. I know a lot of my um, followers, you know, show up for the paper crafting, mixed media, painting, and all that goodness. But, oh, look, I found another little piece. I could make this his tail, Linda, and fill in his back a little bit. But, yeah. But I appreciate you guys, Pet Combs, Lisa. Oh, okay. Maybe you should. <laughs> Listen, I've heard people spin everything. <laughs> I've heard of people spinning their dog's hair. So <laughs> you could try the cat if it's long enough. <laughs> You're welcome, Kathy. Thanks for stopping in. You're welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you, Jim. And thanks for coming. And thanks for stopping in, Lori. I appreciate it. So, yeah. Well, I'll be around next week. And, uh, yeah, who knows what we'll play with. But Sunday, we will be on Linda's channel. And I will be doing some polymer clay canes. I'm going to attempt to try to do um, a shamrock. So, you're welcome. I'll talk to you guys around. I'll see you all around. Good night. Bye-bye.